In this video, we'll be talking about the cross product. The cross product is an operation on two vectors v and w in R3 that produces a third vector in R3 that is orthogonal to both v and w. Before we define the cross product of two vectors, we need to go over some notation. In physics, the standard basis E1, E2, E3 is labeled as i, j, and k. So i is the vector 1, 0, 0, j is the vector 0, 1, 0, and k is the vector 0, 0, 1. Now, any vector v with entries v1, v2, v3 can be expressed as a linear combination of your standard basis vector. Specifically, v can be expressed as v1 times 1, 0, 0, plus v2 times 0, 1, 0, plus v3 times 0, 0, 1. Now, rewriting this in terms of i, j, k, this is v1 times i, plus v2 times j, plus v3 times k. As a quick example, the vector v with entries 3, 2, 1 can be expressed as 3i plus 2j plus k. And a vector, say, w, that's expressed as negative i plus j plus 2k can be thought of as the vector negative 1, 1, 2. So now we're ready to define the cross product. Let v and w be two vectors in R3, where v is the vector with entries v1, v2, v3, and w is the vector with entries w1, w2, w3. The cross product of v and w is the determinant of the matrix i, j, k, v1, v2, v3, w1, w2, w3. If we were to compute this determinant, we would have the following. V cross W is equal to, let's do a cofactor expansion along the first row. We would have I times the determinant of the submatrix where I removed the first row and the first column. So that's V2, V3, W2, W3. Then minus J times the determinant of the submatrix where I removed the first row and the second column. So that's V1, V3, W1, W3, plus K times the determinant of the submatrix where I removed the first row and the last column. So that's V1, V2, W1, W2. So let's compute these determinants. We have V2, W3, minus V3, W2, times i, then we have minus v1 w3 minus v3 w1 times j plus v1 w2 minus v2 w1 times k. If I want to write this as a traditional vector that we're used to, we would write this as a vector with the first entry v2 w3 minus v3 w2 Distributing the minus sign on the second term, we would have v3 w1 minus v1 w3. For our last entry, we have v1 w2 minus v2 w1. So that's the cross product v cross w. Let's now look at an example. So here v is the vector 3, 2, 1, and w is the vector negative 1, 1, 2 we're asked to compute V cross W. So V cross W is the determinant of the matrix I, J, K, 3, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, 2. Doing a cofactor expansion along the first row, I have I times the determinant of the submatrix 2, 1, 1, 2, minus J, times the determinant of the submatrix 3, 1, negative 1, 2, and then plus k times the determinant of the submatrix 3, 2, negative 1, 1. So that's 2 times 2 minus 1 times 1 times i minus 3 times 2 minus 1 times negative 1 times j plus 
3 times 1 minus 2 times negative 1 times k. Simplifying this, we have 3i minus 7j plus 5k. So that's the vector 3, negative 7, 5. In the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that the cross product of v and w is orthogonal to both v and w. So let's check this. To check that two vectors are orthogonal, I can take their dot product. So if I take v and I dot with v cross w, I get 3, 2, 1 dot 3, negative 7, 5. That's 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 7 plus 1 times 5, which is 9 minus 14 plus 5 or 0. Right, so that tells me that v is orthogonal to v cross w. I can also check that w is orthogonal to v cross w. If I take w and I take the dot product with v cross w, I get negative 1, 1, 2 dot with 3, negative 7, 5. This gives me negative 1 times 3 plus 1 times negative 7 plus 2 times 5, which is negative 3 minus 7 plus 10. That again is 0. So we see here that v and w are both orthogonal to v cross w. Again, in general, v cross w is always orthogonal to v and w, following the right-hand rule. And what that means is this. If we have the vector v, and then the vector w. Now what you can do is take your right hand and point your fingers in the direction of v, then curl your fingers into the direction of w. Your thumb indicates the direction of v cross w. So in this case, v cross w will be going upwards. Now if instead I have the same v and w, this time, let's consider w cross v. So I'm doing the cross product in the other order. This time, I'm going to start with pointing my fingers in the direction of w, and I'm going to try to curl my fingers towards the direction of v. Now, the thumb will indicate where the cross product goes. In this case, if I start at w and I curl towards v, my thumb is going to point downwards. So if I do w cross v, my cross product points downwards. Now, when we learned about the dot product, we had the formula v dot w is equal to the length of v times the length of w times cosine of the angle in between. It turns out that we have a similar formula for the cross product. Let v and w be two vectors in R3. If theta is the angle between v and w, then the length of v cross w is equal to the length of v times the length of w times sine of theta. The formula that we have for dot products, v dot w is equal to the length of v times the length of w times cosine theta, told us that v and w are orthogonal if and only if v dot w is equal to zero. We have something similar for cross products. We can think about when the sine of theta is zero. Well, the sine of theta is zero if theta is zero or 180 degrees. So the statement is v and w are parallel if and only if the length of v cross w is zero, which also means that v cross w is the zero vector. Now, there's one last topic that I want to talk about before we end the video. It turns out that we can use cross products to find the areas of triangles in three dimensions. Consider the triangle formed by two vectors v and w. So to illustrate this, let's say I have a vector v and a vector w. So to form a triangle with these two vectors, I would just close this last edge. Now let's label the angle between v and w theta. Now let's draw an edge from the head of w down to v that's perpendicular to v. So we know that the area of this triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. 
Well, the base of this triangle would be the length of V, and the height, well, that, using trigonometry, we can find to be the length of W times sine of theta, because the length of W is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So again, the area of the triangle is 1 half times the base, which is the length of V, times the height, which is the length of W, times sine of theta. Now, the length of V times the length of W times sine theta is the length of V cross W. So the area of the triangle is 1 half times the length of V cross W. So let's look at an example where we would use this. In this example, we want to find the area of the triangle with vertices 1, negative 2, 3, 2, 0, 6, and 5, 3, 9. Now, if I want to use the cross product to find the area of the triangle, I would need some vectors. Suppose I call these points A, B, and C. I can plot these points like this. A, B, and C. Then I can make a vector from A to B and from A to C. Then I can complete the triangle by connecting B and C. Now, let me label the vector from A to B as the vector V, and let's label the vector from A to C, W. Now, to find what V is, I need to figure out how many units I move in the x direction, y direction, and z direction to get from 1, negative 2, 3 to 2, 0, 6. For my x coordinate, to get from 1 to 2, I would go 1 unit over in the x direction. For my y-coordinate, to get from negative 2 to 0, I would go 2 units in the y-direction. For my z-coordinate, I go from 3 to 6, so I would move 3 units in the z-direction. And I want to do something similar to find my vector w. I need to go from the point 1, negative 2, 3 to the point 5, 3, 9. So let's see how many units I need to go in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. For my x coordinate, I go from 1 to 5, so that's 4 units in the x direction. For my y coordinates, I go from negative 2 to 3, so that's 5 units in the y direction. And for my z coordinate, I go from 3 to 9, so that's 6 units in the z direction. So now that I have my V and W, I can calculate the cross product. So V cross W is the determinant of I, J, K, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's I times the determinant of the submatrix, 2, 3, 5, 6, minus J times the determinant of the submatrix, 1, 3, 4, 6 and then plus k times the determinant of 1, 2, 4, 5. So this simplifies as 2 times 6 minus 3 times 5 times i minus 1 times 6 minus 3 times 4 times j, and then plus 1 times 5 minus 2 times 4 times k. Simplifying this, I get negative 3i plus 6j and then minus 3k. So v cross w is the vector negative 3, 6, negative 3. Now, the area of the triangle is 1 half times the length of v cross w. So that's 1 half times the length of negative 3, 6, negative 3. So that's going to be square root of negative 3 squared plus 6 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is 1 half times square root of 9 plus 36 plus 9, which is 1 half times square root of 54. So that's all that we're going to be covering. Thank you so much for watching.